Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is episode 4 of How to Survive EVE Online. In this episode, we are going to go through the military uh, career funnel chain. Before I actually get started on that, though, uh, I want to do some things involving skill books. First of all, uh, if I sh open the fitting window, and I look in this section of the fitting window on the right-hand side, if I mouse over this, it says max locked targets. This is how many different things I can target lock at the same time using this ship's electronic systems. There's two limits on how many things you can lock. One is the ship-based limit, and you can look that up here on the fitting window. The other is a skill-based limit. So if I open the character sheet, and I... First of all, let me go to the settings tab and show all skills and then click on the Skills tab, and then right-click Electronics and open the Group window, and let me make this big. There we go. The skill-based limit is 2 plus your level in targeting plus your level in multitasking. Now, I don't have targeting or multitasking uh, injected right now. So, because of skills, I'm limited to two targets, even if my ship is capable of target locking more. Whichever limit is lower, that's the limit that applies. Uh, since we're going to go into combat, I want to be able to target lock more things. So, uh, targeting, I'm going to right-click targeting, I'm going to view market details. The other way to do this is you can open up the market window from the EVE menu, business, market, you can go to the search tab, you can type in targeting. And you would want to look for the item that only says targeting, and you want to make sure this icon up here looks like a skill book. Look for the tar cheapest targeting skill book in station, should be 90,000 ISK, right click, buy this, you want to get one copy, click buy, close the market. And let's right-click targeting uh, and inject skill. Let me go back to my character sheet, open the training queue. And you know what? Let me left-click and drag the title bar of the training queue and merge it with the character sheet, because that's how I normally like to keep it organized. I don't need this window open here. And f under electronics, there's the targeting skill. I am going to slot this in once, twice and click apply. All right. So by the time targeting level two finishes training, I will be able to target lock four things at the same time, assuming that my ship's electronics can do that. The Navitas cannot, it can only target lock three things. So it can only benefit from targeting level one. But anyway, I'm gonna close that. Now I've got a whole lot of other skill books lying around here. Let me see if I can do anything with these. If I show info on each of them, I can see that it has prerequisites that I don't have yet. Just for the sake of keeping my inventory tidy, I'm going to go through each skill book one at a time. Let me reopen the trading queue by clicking the blue and black progress bar under my portrait. Uh, industry. I'm going to slot that in towards the end here. Level 2 level 3, so I'll be able to take care of mass production later. Production efficiency also needs industry level 3. Uh, salvaging needs mechanics 3 and survey 3. Uh, there's survey, let me drag that in. Uh, standard missiles needs missile launcher operation 2, which I've already got queued. Hacking needs electronic upgrades level 3. So I'm going to right click electronic upgrades view market details, right click the skill book, click buy, click buy. I'm going to inject that skill. Let's see, electronic upgrades three. So one, two, I can't see that low, and three. Uh, negotiation needs social level one. So I'm going to right click, view market details, and buy a copy of the social skill book here in station. 
will right click, I will inject that. Now where is social? Strangely enough, it's under the social category. You know what? That's a short one. I will slot that in right after targeting. Click apply. However much I can fit in. I'm not going to be able to fit in everything right now. Uh, contracting cannot be trained on trial accounts. Says so in the description. And this is still a trial account as I am filming this right now. So I'm not going to worry about contracting. And retail needs trade level 2. Trade. So I will slot that in towards the end. One and two. And click apply. You might not necessarily have room to queue up all of the prerequisites. That's fine. Just queue up what you can. That gives you a 24-hour buffer. And you have an, an entire 24 hours to stuff more things onto the end when you get around to it later. All right, click apply. Make sure this timer here is counting down. Good. Close the window. Close that window. All right. Uh, enough with poking around with the skill books. Let's get started on the military chain, and since I don't remember which one of these is the military agent, I'm going to go to the help button on the Neocom. Or if I removed the help button, oh, I can... Yeah, if I had removed the help button earlier, I could go to the Eve menu, and I can find help here. I can click on it, and I can show the career agents. I need to give it a moment to load that window. Click that button again. There we go. So the military chain, here the agent is Seville Aeron for a Center for Advanced Studies. You're, if you're in a different NPC corporation, uh, the name of the military agent will be something different, but it should still be listed under military. So click Start Conversation. I'm going to close this window. Click on that. Bring it to the front. Close it. Cash flow for Capsuleer is 1 of 10. And we need to clear some pirates from an asteroid belt, and we will be rewarded with a railgun when we are finished. This is a pure combat mission, so let's open up the fitting window. Now, I had just finished the industry and business chains, so I don't need a mining laser right now. I am going to grab my light electron blaster. Uh, double left click on my ship in my ship's hangar. Uh, drag in more charges. By the way, in space... You know what? Let me save that explanation for I'm actually in space. Uh, did I forget anything? Nothing that I... Oh, you know what? I've just got the skill to use an afterburner now. I'm gonna click my... click and drag my afterburner onto my ship. Yes! It fits! Excellent! Good! All right, so I got two blasters, an afterburner, a small armor repair, and I'm not doing mining work. I don't need the expanded cargo hold. Uh, an overdrive injector can't hurt. This gives me more speed. I will close the fitting window for the moment. I will accept the mission. And the game is going to throw text at you about orbiting. Let me close the agent conversation window and undock. Now, turrets miss for two general reasons. Either you're moving around your target, either the target is moving around you too quickly, or you're moving around the target too quickly, or the target is too far away. Some ships like to orbit to try and uh, keep moving around whatever it is they're shooting at on the theory that the target they're dealing with has a harder time dealing with moving targets than the shooter does. Alright. So... In our case, we are using blasters. Uh, we've got a tracking speed of 0 0.438 radians per second, but only a range, an optimal of 500 meters, and a falloff range of 1,500 meters. So we generally want to be less than 2 kilometers away, but we can move around the target pretty quickly and still hit the target. All right. Other weapons are the other way. They have very bad tracking speeds, so they can't deal with moving targets very well, but they have very good ranges. We will get to those later in the series. 
So, right click empty space, cash flow for cap is 1 of 10, encounter, and warp to location. Now, if I want to, I can group my weapons by shift, click, and drag one module onto the other on my heads up display next to the capacitor donut. It's also possible to group them on the fitting window. I can also ungroup them from here. I can group them on the fitting window, but if I'm going to do it on the fitting window, shift, click, and drag, I don't know if that'll work. No. If I want to do it on the fitting window, the modules have to be empty. And then I can shift, click, and drag on the fitting window. If I'm in station, I have to do it from the fitting window. If I'm in space, I can do it from the heads-up display. Right now, I'm going to reload my weapons. And there are the Corelli Initiates. I'm going to target lock both of them. All right, one of them's way too far away. This one is 12 kilometers away, much closer. I'm going to go smack him first. So I'm approaching this Corelli Initiate right now. And you know what? Field training completed. Ah, good. Targeting level 1. Now I can target lock three things. As I am getting closer, I have to get within 2 kilometers. I know that because I studied my weapons. I, looked, I did a show info on my weapons beforehand. He's yellow boxing me. Now he's red boxing me. Those colored brackets turned red, meaning that he's shooting. So I hit F1 to fire my weapons. I'm going to hit control spacebar. Alright, there's his wreck. The wreck is empty, has nothing of interest. Alright. Let me zoom out a bit. Where are these enemies? Ah, there they are. So that's yellow boxing. Right now he's yellow boxing me. That means he already has a target lock, but he hasn't done anything hostile yet. Now your overview shows you a list of things that are near you. Distance, name, type, and as well as what icon bracket they're using. There's more information that can be added to this. So I'm going to left click the menu icon on the overview. That's in the upper left corner of the overview here. Left click, open the overview settings. Um, let me make the settings a little bigger. I'm going to go to the columns tab. I'm going to add velocity, radio velocity, and angular velocity. And I will close this for now. And that adds three new columns here. So I can click and drag the column separator here at the top. I don't need radial velocity to be that big. I don't need angular velocity to be that big. Four decimal places is enough for me. So I can see how fast it's moving, how fast it's getting closer to me, and how quickly it's moving around me in radians per second. And now that this guy has, then that this pirate has gotten within two kilometers, I'm going to hit F1 to open fire. And he explodes. I'm going to click the next Corelli initiate, and what I'm going to do, I can hit approach, or I, or I can hit orbit. Right now my default orbit is one kilometer, so my ship will try to move around him at a distance of about one kilometer away. So if I click the orbit button, by the way, I threw on an afterburner onto my ship. I might have told you to train the afterburner skill, get that up to maybe level one or two, and now I can use an afterburner. What an afterburner does is it will use some of your capacitor energy to make you go faster. So now, if you look at the velocity display down here, I'm now moving at about, oh, 700 meters per second. All right. I'm close enough. I'm going to turn off the afterburner, otherwise I'm going to overshoot my target. I just wanted to use the afterburner to get closer. Although, with some combat ships, you can use the afterburner while orbiting. You do have to be careful about not overshooting your target, though. Control, left click, the Corelli Initiate. Now, as I'm orbiting, take a look at the angular velocity column. Right now, I'm moving around him at a... Well, we're moving around each other at about 0.26 radians per second. Our blasters can track up to 0.46 radians per second. 
so this is well within our tracking speed. It's also worth noting our weapons are frigate-sized weapons and we're shooting a frigate-sized target. That's an important concept. If, uh, if I were using battleship-sized weapons and trying to hit a frigate-sized target, then that's a penalty to... that's a multiplier penalty to my tracking speed. So battleship-sized weapons have a very hard time hitting frigate-sized targets, but frigate-sized weapons have an easy time hitting battleship-sized targets. Just so that you know that. I'm gonna hit F1 because I've done enough talking. Boring him to death is obviously not killing him. Control spacebar, I'm gonna left-click the wreck and hit open cargo. Since I want to loot this wreck before I go anywhere, Control left click the last Corellia initiate. Alright, I'm gonna loot everything. And then orbit. Left click the Corellia initiate and orbit, and I will hit Option F1 or Alt F1 to turn on the afterburner. Alt F1, hold on. Oh, there's something in between me and him. Okay. Or is there? I'm not sure. Let me turn my camera around. Oh, he managed to get caught inside the structure. Alright, let me double left click off to the side a bit. Good enough. Control spacebar to stop. He managed to work his way out of the structure. F1 to start shooting. And he explodes. These wreck icons are all empty. There's nothing of interest for me in them. Uh, Left-click the station. I don't like how close I am to these structures. Double left-click to move away. And Alt F1 to turn on my afterburner, just so that I move faster. By the way, you may have noticed some ordinary missions have ordinary asteroids in them. You're not required to do any mining. It's not a part of the mission, but if you wanted to come back and mine before you turn in the mission, you could certainly do that. But this is just Veldspar. I would not bother. I'm going to turn off my afterburner and dock at the station. Warp drive active. You know what, let me open up my journal and double left click the mission in question. By the way, what I'm doing, uh, just in case I didn't review this earlier, the, I have the journal icon on my Neocom, or I can go to the Eve menu and go to journal. Although I had it open already, so I just closed it. Eve menu, journal, the agents tab, the mission sub tab, and I double left click cash flow for capsuleers. And this is a green check mark, so I finished the mission. I just had to go do something. I don't have to retrieve anything, so there should only be one green check mark. I right click Civil Aeron, start a conversation, and I complete the mission. And I get a GAT 75mm Gatling rail and an antimatter charge. Now, the game is going to throw text at you about the repair shop. Uh, sometimes you take armor or hull damage to your ship. Uh, you can pay a station's repair shop to fix that for you. If your modules took damage, either because you were shot down into your structure but managed to escape barely intact, or maybe you're using the thermodynamics skill and you're overheating your modules and your modules took damage, that you would need to, you would probably want to have a repair shop fix that up. Um, other than module damage, uh, there are such modules as armor and hull repairers to fix that sort of thing, so you don't have to pay the repair shop, but if you want to pay the repair shop, you can do that. All right, let me request the next mission. 
And he wants me to eliminate some pirates and rescue a civilian miner that they are holding as captive. Alright. So, I am going to click accept. And this is an outdated tutorial. Let me close this window. Oh, you know what? Let me drop off the loot in the station. I don't need this anymore. And undock. If you actually read through this text tutorial about guns and ammo, it will claim that the weapon you'd been using so far doesn't require ammunition. That is true of the weapons that normally automatically come with rookie ships. Velators normally have a civilian light electron blaster. However, when CCP redid the tutorials, they supplied you with a real weapon that requires real ammunition. Uh, let me get rid of this window, right click, and let's go to the mission in question. Encounter dead space, warp to location. Warp drive active. And control R to reload weapons. Three Corelli initiates. Where are they? Ah, there they are. One, two, three. All right, let me select the closest one and try to orbit him. And let me activate my afterburner since I want to get a lot closer very quickly. Normally I'd be limited to about 350 meters per second, but with the afterburner running, I'm pushing 750 meters per second. You can take a look at your maximum speed in the fitting window. Uh, it's over here where you can see 817.2 meters per second as your maximum speed. If I turn off the afterburner and wait for the afterburner to finish cycling, you'll see that my max speed just dropped to 412. All right, I'm going to start target locking these pirates. And I'm going to select the one that's less than two kilometers away and open fire. And he just turned into a wreck. Select the next one, hit F1, open fire, he just turned into a wreck. Uh, select the last one, hit orbit. I'm only going to pulse the afterburner, so I'm going to turn it on and then turn it off. Afterburners and micro warp drives operate in cycles. I can't stop a cycle early to prevent from overshooting a target. So I do have to think a little bit in advance. F1 to start shooting. And he turned into a wreck. And there's two more Corelli initiates. So I control F click, select one of them, click orbit. Again, uh, turn on the afterburner, turn off the afterburner. Click the nearest one, and hit F1 shoot. Of course, I think I'm now shooting the one that I'm not orbiting, but they're reasonably close. Hit F1 again, hit control spacebar, alright, there we go. I can double left click the cargo container, that will be interpreted as a open container command and I can loot all. There is the civilians, he's now safely on board. Congratulations, you've rescued a hostage. I can also double left click this wreck over here that has the full icon. Notice how this one's a full icon, all the others are hollow. This full one is the only one that has loot on it. Try that again, double left click, and loot all. Left click the station, and click dock.
Warp drive active. By the way, I believe we are about to be awarded with a new type of ship. Different kinds of ship have different types of bonuses, which is something that I haven't Docking discussed as requested. yet. Docking request accepted. So once I'm in the station, I will go over that in a bit more detail. Let's right-click Seville Aeron, start conversation, and let's complete mission. By the way, uh, he also granted a motion production skill book, which I didn't notice right off the bat. Let me see if I can inject this. Show info, prerequisites, requires gunnery level 2. Good. I'm going to right-click this and train it now to level 1. Now, ships. We were originally started off with a Velator. If you right-click the Velator and show info, and you go to the description tab, it gives you some flavor text about the Velator, but it then says something else. Special ability. 5% bonus to hybrid turret damage per skill level. This is poorly worded. What it means is the Galente Frigate skill. So if I open my character sheet, and I right-click Spaceship Command, open the group window, and let me make that a bigger window, and scroll down and look for Galente Frigate, I've got Galente Frigate trained to level 3 right now. Let me close my character sheet. So, because I have Galente Frigate at level 3, Velators do 15% more damage than any other rookie ship when using hybrid turrets. And that means blasters and railguns. Right. We've been using blasters. We've just been awarded with a railgun. Those are both hybrid turrets. The projectile turrets are called autocannons and artillery. The laser turrets are called pulse lasers and beam lasers. The next ship we were given by the agents was a Navitas. And its bonuses, it's got a 50%, uh, I'm sorry, it's got a 60% flat reduction to the capacitor requirement of mining lasers. So mining lasers use less capacitor energy just because they're fit to a Navitas rather than something else like, say, a Velator. Additionally, it has a bonus based on your skill level in Galente Frigates. 5% bonus to cargo capacity and 20% bonus to mining laser yield per skill level. At, I have Galente Frigate level 3 right now, so my cargo capacity is 15% larger than the listed, well, than whatever the default is. I'm actually flying this Navitas in question, so the attributes are taking my skills into account. So it's 15% larger than the base cargo capacity, and the my mining lasers pull 60% more ore per cycle than mining lasers on ships that aren't bonused for mining. So this is a mining ship. We were, however, just given an Atron. So if I right-click the Atron and show info, its bonuses, 10% bonus to small hybrid turret falloff, and 5% bonus to small hybrid turret damage per skill level. Again, given that I'm flying that I've got Galente Frigate level 3, this means that the falloff range on my small hybrid turrets will be 30% longer on an Atron than on a ship that doesn't have this bonus. Like say the Navitas I'm sitting in right now. So if I open my fitting window and I show info on my light electron blasters. I've got a, an accuracy falloff of 1500 meters and an optimal of 500. Let's strip everything off of this. Let's also empty out the cargo hold. I'm going to right click the Atron, assemble ship, uh, drag this into the background here from the ship's hangar, or you can right click and select make active. Uh, 
let me try that with a ship that I'm not in. So there's a make active option for any ship you're not sitting in right now. But now I'm in the H1. So if I now take my two light electron blasters and throw those onto the H1, shift, click, and drag to group them, and let me load them with antimatter charges, and now I show info. The optimal is still 500 meters, but the accuracy fall off is now 1950 meters. So I can shoot out to two and a half kilometers with this thing. It's not much, but it's a little bit better than the Navitas. That, and the fact that the Atron has a damage bonus. So these blasters will do more damage because they're fitted to an Atron rather than something else. Let me throw on my small armor repair. Let me throw on my afterburner and my overdrive injector. All right, I'm gonna close this. Let me ask Civil Aeron for another mission. All right, destroy the pirates, loot the secret documents from the container they leave behind and report back to your agent. He will grant you two 75mm Gatling Rail 1s. Let's accept this mission. Uh, I don't know why the game is throwing text at you about stasis webifiers. Because it doesn't supply you with a stasis webifier. Anyway. I'm going to close this. Close that. Let's actually change out weapons. So blasters we've been talking about, two and a half kilometers, but very good tracking speeds. Tracking speeds of 0 0.438 radians per second. I am going to pull out the charges. I am going to right click and clear the group. I am going to pull out the blasters. I'm gonna throw on my new 75 millimeter Gatling rails. And I am going to left shift, left click, and drag one onto the other again to group them. Uh, let me throw the antimatter charges in there. Right click, stack everything because I don't want my inventory to be a mess. Double left click the background to open my Atron's cargo hold. And I will shift, left click, and drag some charges into my cargo hold. I think 2000 will do it. That will last me a while for these missions. So if I show info on these rail guns, they've got a much lower tracking speed. It's only 0 0.1365 radians per second. That's about a third as much as what we had before. They're going to have a much harder time dealing with targets that are moving around me. The optimal, however, is 3 kilometers, and the accuracy falloff is 3.9 kilometers. So I've got an effective range of about 6.9 kilometers, so I can hit things at least twice as far as I was able to previously. These aren't the longest range of the frigate railguns, but they're much longer range than blasters. I'm going to close this, and you know what? Re right click my ship, change the name Atron, so it's not saying Professor Seamus Dunhu's Atron. And Oh yes, I did accept the mission, so I'm going to click on Dock. Alright, I'm in space. Right-click empty space, cash fall for capsuleers. Encounter dead space, warp to location. Warp drive. As of the time of this recording, you cannot navigate the context menu using the arrow keys on your keyboard. The keys, they do nothing! Just like the goggles, they do nothing. Alright, I've got real guns fit to my Atron. Gotta keep in mind, I can't deal with targets that are moving around me too quickly. Especially not frigates moving faster than 0.13 radians per second. But I'm going to right click. Mm. 
Let me scroll out and see what the tactical situation is. And uh, you know what? I'm going to double left click in some direction and move away and hit my afterburner. And let's keep some distance. I can kite them a little bit. And what is a runner drone? Oh, you know what? I think that's supposed to stasis web, but anyway. Alright, I'm getting a little too far away, so I'm going to turn off the afterburner. Stop shooting. Eh, control space bar. I went a little too far away. Let me lock things up again. I'm going to sit here and wait for them this time. Alright, that runner drone's about five kilometers out. And I killed him. Alright, this Weber drone is doing something called stasis webifying. So if I left click in some direction in space, notice that I'm only moving at about, oh, 80 meters a second. He's stasis webifying me, and you can see that icon here on the right on your overview. If you mouse over it, it says pilot is webifying me. Let me shoot him so that he's not doing that anymore, and then control space bar to full stop. And let me uh, lock these other two things. Now, keeping in mind that my operational range is about 7 kilometers, I start shooting as they come within 7 kilometers. Remember, 3 kilometer optimal, 3.9 kilometer fall off. Your weapons can hit beyond that range, it's just that your probability to hit keeps dropping further out beyond optimal that you go. So I can hit that Corelli Initiate at 8 kilometers. It's just the chance to hit would be less than half. Alright, double left click this cargo container. Oh, there's the secret documents. I'm going to loot those. Uh, double left click the first wreck. And control R to reload my weapons. Double left click again to loot. Double left click the next wreck over. Loot all. All these other wrecks are empty, so I'm going to left click the station and dock. Warp drive active. By the way, notice how I'm not using a railgun and a blaster. Generally, you want to fit your ship so that you can bring all of your firepower to bear at the same time. Blasters and railguns, or more generally speaking, short-range turrets and long-range turrets, uh, are meant for different situations. The short-range turrets can't do damage at long range. The long-range turrets can't do damage to targets that are moving around them quickly. So if I had one blaster and one railgun, only one of those weapons would be able to hit the target at the same time. For these tutorial missions, it doesn't matter too much, but later on, you're going to find that that's significant. And you'll find that you're hobbling yourself if only half of your firepower can hit at any given time. Right-click Civil Aeron, start conversation, and let's complete the mission. Quest the next mission. Ah, propulsion jamming was a reward from the mission. Can I inject this right now? Yes, I can. So I'm going to right-click and train that now to level 1. Alright, next mission. He wants us to warp to the dead space area, find the Stargate, and approach it. We're going to click Accept. And the game's going to throw text at you about shield tanking. And we'll give you a civilian shield booster. I'm not going to bother for a couple of reasons. First, let's not get into the habit of trying to dual tank. Usually combat ships will optimize their armor or their shields to sustain damage, not both. 
you can get better performance if you focus on tanking one layer than trying to tank both layers at the same time. There are exceptions, very rare exceptions. There aren't many of them. Uh, so I'm not going to bother fitting this civilian shield booster for that reason. Uh, the other reason is... Oh, actually I do have the fitting grid for it. Uh, modules, besides requiring slots... I've got two high slots, two medium slots, two low slots. Besides requiring, requiring a slot, they also require resources on your ship. The central processing unit and the power grid. You can't exceed... Either any either of those restrictions. Right. So you're limited by slots, you're limited by the CPU, you're limited by power grid. Now let's close this window and undock. Right click empty space. Cash flow for capsuleers encounter dead space warps location. By the way, the other reason I didn't want to fit the shield booster is I don't have the capacitor to support it anyway. Uh, the, your capacitor is your current energy pool. It's what your modules can make use of in order to operate. If you don't have enough capacitor generation capability, you can't run everything. So for example, if I run the weapons and the afterburner and the armor repair all at once, I will deplete my capacitor in 17 seconds. Alright, we're at the mission. And we're going to left-click this thing here. It looks like a Stargate, but it's really, if you right-click on it, it's really a large collidable structure. We're going to click Approach. And it's 16 kilometers away, so I will pulse the afterburner once. And let's look at local channel for this one. And full stop. And so something's supposed to happen. Your computer detects gas and radioactive materials spewing out of the Stargate at frightening speed. It would be best to leave immediately before your ship starts to take damage. Double left click in space. We've got a lot of obstacles around us. These can interfere with our ability to get into warp. So I'm going to activate the afterburner and get clear of this mess. Notice how I'm constantly taking damage. That's environmental damage scripted by the mission. So it's the mission itself rather than something in the mission that's doing damage to my ship. Now that I'm far enough away, I'm going to left click the station and I'm going to click dock. I've got plenty of clearance to go into warp without bumping into anything. Again, remember, bumping into things when trying to go to warp is a concern before you go into warp. Once you're already in warp, like right now, it doesn't matter who or what you go through. By the way, that beeping you heard was my shield alarm. You can go into the options and set the audio alerts. And you know what? I like to have my armor alert a bit higher. Let's Locking make that 66%. And I like to have my shield alarm also at about 66%. Just personal preference. You can turn off the alarms if you want to, or you can adjust them to different thresholds. Right-click Seville Aeron, start the conversation, and complete the mission. Alright, uh, the game threw text at me about afterburners. I just got rid of the window. I already mentioned afterburners. So I'm going to request the next mission. And here we have, let's see, meet up with the pirate at the repair outpost, follows instructions, and report back to your agent. 
they want to talk for some reason. So we are going to click accept. The game is going to throw uh, text at you about different damage types. You can go ahead and read this at your leisure. Uh, but there are basically four types of damage. Electromagnetic, electromagnetic thermal, kinetic, and explosive. All right. And your different layers can be made more resistant to the different types of damage. It doesn't help that you've made your ship extremely resistant to even the greatest of explosions if your enemy is shooting you with heat rays. Alright, something to keep in mind. So, I'm going to close this conversation window, and we are going to undock. Hold on, did I empty my cargo hold? Let me abort, abort, abort. Uh, no, I didn't drop off the loot. Let me drop off the loot, merge the looted ammunition with my other ammunition, and now I will undock. As a Galente character, you will probably be using blasters and railguns, for a while at least, and those tend to do kinetic thermal damage. Some kinetic, some thermal. Uh, projectile weapons can do all different sorts of damage depending upon what ammunition you load them with. Missiles can do whichever damage type you want as long as you load the appropriate missile into the launcher. Lasers are limited to EM and thermal damage. All right, you're going to be thrown a text message, which you can read at your leisure. The pirate that you see on your overview is not going to do anything to you right away. Uh, so he's not going to start shooting until you shoot first. Basically, he wants to talk to you, and then he wants to put you to a little bit of a test, and he will wait for you to attack him first. You can read this on your own uh, at your own leisure. I'm not going to waste your time. So control left click. The angular velocity is reasonably low, so I'm going to hit F1 and start shooting. I'm keeping an eye on the angular velocity here on the right, because if it gets above 0 0.13, I need to do something about that because he's moving around me too quickly. Alright. Left click the station and dock. Control R, reload weapons. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Okay. Right click Civil Aeron, start conversation. And everything's a green check mark. We're going to complete the mission. He gave you, as a reward, a shield management skill book. Uh, I will right click and inject skill, but I won't train that up right away. Request mission. Alright, destroy Wolf's outpost, you'll find it in the final room of the complex. Alright, so we will click accept, and let's get going.
click next, make this go away. By the way, you may sometimes see containers outside the station uh, called free missiles or free stuff or whatever, and it will appear yellow. Yellow means it does not belong to you. If you take anything from it, you will be flagged as a thief, and the owner can legally shoot at you without Concord intervention. So don't touch yellow wrecks, don't touch yellow containers, leave them alone. Right click empty space, cache 12 for capsuleers, encounter dead space, warp to location. Warp drive active. I don't think anybody's supposed to be baiting people like that in a tutorial system. I'll have to ask the game masters about that. I'll file a petition when I'm done recording. I could be wrong. Outside the tutorial systems, it is perfectly legitimate, however, so you want to be careful about that. Now, if it's blue, that means it's been abandoned and anybody can legally take from it. So the owner can't shoot at you because he already declared the property to be abandoned. All right, let's activate the acceleration gate. You know how to do that. Now, I think this mission involves multiple acceleration gates. Alright, here's the next acceleration gate. Let's see if we can activate this one. Can't activate. It is guarded. Right. Start target locking things. And let's double left click in space. Let's get away from this bumping thing. Alright. Control space bar and start shooting. Really, I want to wait for 7 kilometers, but I suppose 8's good enough. Let me deal with the target that's out at 7 kilometers, since I'm more likely to be able to hit that one. This Corelli Initiate is moving around me at 0.285 radians per second. That means my railguns can't keep up with it. Alright. Let me double left click downwards. I'm going to kite this guy a little bit. And let me take the more distant target. There we go. Turrets will do the most damage at optimal range or less, and at zero angular velocity. But very rarely will a target cooperate with you by keeping its angular velocity low for your sake. There are ways to make that happen, though. For example, let me select this Corelli Initiate and approach. I will turn on the afterburner and turn off the afterburner. So I'm pulsing it once. So what I'm about to do now is reverse kiting. I'm flying close to the NPC, and the NPC is trying to follow default orbit behavior. So the NPC will try to get out away from me until it's at its orbit distance. But that causes it to move in a straight line, generally. Although I think this guy's preferred orbit distance route. Really there we go! So now you can see the angular velocity has dropped uh, really small. So if I start shooting him, I can do a lot of damage, despite the fact that he's really close. Players will not be that stupid, just keep that in mind if you're in a fight with a player. Now this Corelli Initiate is moving around me way too quickly, so I am going to double left click away from him. There we go. Control spacebar, because I don't want to get too far away. I just want to get far away enough that I'm keeping my angular velocity slow. And 
And this one's orbiting too fast now, so... Double-click in the opposite direction from where he's moving. That will drop the angular velocity. I'm watching that number... Now. And he explodes. Control spacebar. I am going to go loot some of these wrecks before continuing on. There isn't a whole lot of loot, so it should still all fit in my uh, ship's cargo hold. Mr. Pentis copper tag, which I can sell on the market. There are uses for these things. Or I can hold on to them if I want to use them myself in the future. Alright, that loots all the wrecks. I'm going to activate the gate. Now, the text message says I would recommend leaving the loot in the wreck after you obliterate the structure. You would not want to be caught trying to jump between systems with contraband in your cargo hold. The local security forces do not look kindly upon such activity. I don't think it's this mission that has the contraband. Alright. My guns have an optimal of 3 kilometers. I think it's high time I changed my default orbit distance. So, I'm going to left-click Wolf's Outpost right-click the orbit button and set my default orbit distance and I'm going to type in 3000 for 3000 meters and click OK. I will now click the orbit button, control left click the outpost, shoot it, and lo and behold the moment I start shooting it, enemies show up. You know what, let me keep orbiting this container just so that I'm not sitting still. Uh, let me shoot some of these NPCs that showed up. Sorry, I meant to shoot the Corelli Initiate. Let me try that again. That's one of them dead. Now I'm running around, and this NPC is trying to run to catch up with me. Uh, his angular velocity is a little on the high side with what I can track, but it still works. Now, a very important concept here. Um, again, turrets miss for two general reasons. One of them is the targets moving around the shooter too quickly. So these wolf's defense sentries are trying to shoot me. But they're not doing much. If I hit control spacebar to full stop, and let me reload my weapons while I'm doing that. If I full stop, that makes me a much easier target. The angular velocity is a lot smaller. Now my shields are taking a lot more damage. So notice how quickly my shield bar has started going down. Let me start orbiting this cargo container again. And the moment I start orbiting, I'm now a much more difficult target. They have a harder time hitting me, and they're no longer doing damage. Now these wolf's defense, I don't think you need to kill these things but they do have a Concord bounty on their heads, so you can destroy them for a little bit of extra isk. But the mission is all green check marks, so I could go turn this in right now if I wanted to. So anyway, notice how I'm able to damage the sentry guns, but they can't damage me. I'm moving too quickly. All right. Or, if I wanted to, I could probably full stop. Uh, zero angular velocity helps their guns, but it helps my guns as well. If I'm taking too much damage, and I don't have anything for the shields, but I do have an armor repair. So if my armor's taking too much damage, I could just simply activate my armor repair. That's what I have it for. Usually, though, for a frigate to be sitting still is not generally a good idea. Let me get a little closer to this guy. And then control spacebar. Let me double left click the cargo container. Uh, the text message earlier warned you about contraband, but this is not contraband. The way you check, you right click, you show info. There's no legality tab. This stuff is not illegal anywhere. 
so I can carry this around to my cargo hold without a problem. Long limb rows, wheat, common foodstuff items. No problems there. That would be my shield alarm. Let me turn on the armor repair. And at the end of the armor repair cycle, the hit points show up. There we go. Now you do want to be careful with your capacitor supply. If you're leaving things running all the time, your capacitor will drain empty. Alright, so you do have to manage your capacitor levels. The capacitor is empty. Alright, it'll shut off of its own accord, but you do have to wait for your capacitor to recover. Let me loot this last wreck. And let's return to station. Warp drive. And I will reload the weapons. So anyway, this stuff is not contraband. If any of it were contraband, you would see a skull and crossbones icon on the pictures for the items. These don't have any such things, so they are not contraband. Some items have a limited contraband status. For example, slaves are not contraband in the Amar Empire, but they are contraband everywhere else in high security space. You're generally concerned with what is or is not contraband in your particular solar system, whoever holds sovereignty in your area. In my case, the Galente Federation. But for the most part, there aren't too many variations. I can left-click the first thing, shift-left-click the last thing, and drag everything into my ship's hangar. Right-click, start conversation, uh, complete the mission, and the game talks to you about implants again. I trained cybernetics, so I'm going to open up my training queue. I'll pause training for a moment. Right-click this new implant and plug in. Implants are lost when unplugged and when you die. Are you sure you want to use this one now? Yes. Click OK. And then click Apply on the training queue again. Now anything that requires perception will train just a little bit faster because I have that implant. All right, request the next mission. Destroy the pirates at the convoy ambush site. If you get low on hit points, simply warp out and regenerate, then warp back in. Uh, you're going to be granted a small armor repair, but we already have one, so we should be fine. And let's click accept. Armor tanking. Ah, yes, the game will throw text about sh at you about armor tanking. And let's close this. Uh, did I remember to tell you to train energy grid upgrades? I don't remember. Yes, I did. I probably told you to train that up to level 2. So remember what I was saying earlier about how you have to manage your capacitor? My capacitor is going to drain in... 17 seconds if I try to run, run everything all at once. There are modules that can help with that. The reason I had you train energy grid at upgrades level 2 is so that you can go to the market and let's type in cap recharger. Push return and the cap recharger 1 has prerequisites of energy grid upgrades level 2. Let's left click on this. Oh, uh... Uh, there are none in system. Alright, I'm not going to go on a shopping trip. I'm not going to have you go on a shopping trip. If you want, you can. You just right-click uh, the nearest station and select location, set destination. You'd set Colonon as add waypoint. But I'm not going to do that right now. But a cap recharger would go in this nicely in this empty mid-power slot and would help my capacitor regeneration. I could run everything a little bit longer. Which, depending on the situation, might be the difference between winning and going boom. But I'm not anticipating it to be critical for the tutorial missions.
Right click empty space, catch hold for capsuleers, encounter warp to location. And shame on me, what is this mission asking us to do? Ah yes, destroy the pirates of the convoy ambush site. Alright. scroll out my camera so I can see what I'm doing. Alright. Control left click. Mm, they're a little too far away. Left click one of them. Click approach. Or better yet, I'm going to click orbit. Hold on. Let me zoom out my camera and look at these guys from the side. Alright. They're on the far side of that rock. Okay. I'm going to double left click in space and pulse the afterburner. And I'm going to start shooting. And I'm going to double left click in space in various directions just to change my direction of travel. I want to keep them generally within about, oh, seven kilometers or so. double lift click down there. Again, apply geometry. I want to keep them roughly at about seven kilometers or so. Too close and they're going to be moving too fast for my guns to keep up. That would be the shield alarm. spacebar because I think I'm out tracking my own guns and let me pulse the armor repair and you know what let me double left click off in that direction I'm gonna pulse the armor repair again all right I need to get a little closer to the guy I'm trying to shoot Alright, now for the Corelli Scout. Pulse the armor repair. You know what, let me switch to a target that's a little closer. Pulse the armor repair again. I gotta make another pass at these guys. I'm making a lot of use of double left click to adjust my direction. And now I'm way too close and my guns are not hitting. Pulse the armor repair again. Default behavior for modules is you click once to turn them on and you click again to turn them off. If you don't want to do that, if you know you're gonna be pulsing it all the time, you can right click the module and set auto repeat off. So, if now that I've set auto repeat off, I can just click the module and it will cycle once and then shut itself off. Now 
Now, sometimes I might be running into trouble. So what I might do is I will look at these brackets in space, I will click one of them, might say this customs office, and I will click the align button. And I will remember that I'm aligning to Clelanon 3. If I'm taking way too much damage, and I think I want to warp out, now I'm aligned to Clelanon 3. All I have to do is click something near Clelanon 3 again, hit the warp button, and I will be fine. I will warp out. Assuming, of course, that I'm not warp scrambled. If the NPCs are warp scrambling me, that will appear as an icon on the right side of the overview, and I have to deal with that problem first before I can warp out. If you're warp scrambled and you're losing hit points, chances are you will lose your ship, unless you can solve that problem quickly. I don't want to trust the default orbit command here, because there's a lot of obstacles. I, For situations like this, I prefer to manually fly my ship. And let me activate the armor repair again. Remember, I set auto-repeat off on the module. If I want to change that, I can right-click and set auto-repeat on. That returns it to default behavior, where once it's been clicked, it will keep cycling until I tell it to stop, or until the capacitor has been drained. Play around with the options and see which option you're more comfortable with. It is possible to set up your ship such that you can run your armor repair all the time without ever having to turn it off. That's called a cap-stable setup. Not sure I can really do it with an Atron, but with other ship types it's possible. And I was not watching my capacitor! My weapons also use capacitor but they use much less capacitor than the armor repair. Turn it on. Click again to turn it off. Alright, I'm just going to approach this Corelli spy. And start shooting. So now he's trying to get away from me to open up the distance, and he's, and by moving directly away from me, his angular velocity has dropped to zero. And he explodes. I'm going to go approach that wreck. I'm going to tap the afterburner, tap it again. Control spacebar to stop my ship. Open the cargo, loot everything, select the station, and click dock. I'm done here. Now, when you dock in a station, your shields are automatically recharged to full, your capacitor is automatically recharged to full, but you're still stuck with whatever armor or structure damage you sustained on your ship. You can either pay the repair shop, if there is a repair shop in the station, or you can repair it yourself. I happen to have an armor repair, I can fix it up myself if I wanted to. But I'm going to show you what the repair bill would look like for this amount of damage on an Atron type Galente frigate. Docking permission requested. Docking request. So if I, if I right-click my ship and get a repair quote, 
It's going to cost me 234 ISK. Doesn't sound like a lot, but the Atron doesn't have a whole lot of hit points, so there's not a whole lot of damage to be repaired. If this were a battleship that were damaged to 7.4%, uh, the repair bill would be a lot more. But I have my own armor repair, so I don't need to pay the repair shop for this. I'm going to start conversation with the agent, uh, complete the mission, drag the light ion blaster down in that I looted down into my items hangar, and request the next mission. Now here, I am going to fly to the hotel my agent mentioned and retrieve the VIPs. If something is amiss, then report back to your agent with the details. Amiss? What could possibly go amiss? Let's click accept. And close, and the game threw a weapon upgrade skill book at you. Right click, see if you can inject it. Yes, we can. Uh, I'm going to undock. I'm not going to train up anything in weapon upgrades right now. I'm going to let my other skills train up for the meantime. Now, the game talks to you, throws text at you about the overview. Uh, right click, cash full of capsuleers, encounter, warp to within zero meters. Alright. So, we're going to open the overview settings. What does the text tutorial have to say about it? Uh, you can personalize your overview to various different things. It's just going to talk to you about, well, throw a text at you about it. The reason it brings up this subject is because we need to approach either a large collidable object or a large collidable structure. I don't remember which it is that we need to look for. But anyway, here we are, and we need to approach the hotel. Now, if you're good at aiming, you can try right-clicking the hotel, and you can try to add large collidable structure to overview. Unfortunately, there are a lot of large collidable structures in here, apparently. Uh, let's see. Le Fleur Inn. There we go. I'm not going to keep large collidable structures on my overview. There's just way too many of them in here. I mean, each of these tiny little individual bits here is being considered a large collidable structure. There's just way too many of them. So I'm going to approach Le Fleur Inn. You know what? I should probably turn on and then off the armor repair. This particular mission does not require you to actually kill anything. So when you get close to the inn, you will notice that it is a trap. So you're going to double left click in empty space, you're going to hit your afterburner, you're going to hit your armor repair, you're going to turn off the armor repair, you're going to get distance away from everything. Let's pulse the armor repair again. I want to be well away from these guys before I try to go into warp. Alright, now I'm going to turn off the afterburner and click dock. Notice how I was not pointed at the station, so I did not go into warp right away. And now I leave the ambush behind, pulse the, af the armor repair one more time, and that should patch up the armor. Another important lesson there, you want to patch up your hit points before you go into your next fight. Really. It's a good idea. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Alright. Right click civil Aeron, start conversation, complete the mission, and request the next mission. Uh, destroy the narcotics warehouse, report back to your agent. Let's click accept, and close, and we will undock.
Right click, empty space, cache full of encapsulators, encounter dead space, warp to location. Warp drive active. All right, there's an acceleration gate. I'm gonna click activate gate, and I will pulse the afterburner. I don't know if that gate is guarded or not. Mm, pulse the afterburner again. All right, this gate is not guarded. We can skip these NPCs. <clears throat> Notice that the acceleration gate operates by the warp mechanics, so if you're not flying in the same direction as the gate, uh, then your ship has to align. Let's lock these apprentice rookies. I don't think they're necessary to complete the mission, but um, let's rip them apart. Control spacebar. I'm going to let them come to me now and open fire. Rex, just in case there's anything of use on them, but let me sh shoot at those things over there. They're way out of my range, I just want to get their attention. Now the narcotics warehouse is sitting on top of this giant rock over here. which I will deal with in a moment. All right, control space bar to stop. probably just target lock the narcotics warehouse that's this module over here if you need to find it it's a large collidable structure you can go into the overview settings and add large collidables again oh hey company Serpentis rookies are not very good at keeping up their angular velocity, apparently. These guys are moving just at about my tracking speed. You know what? I'm not going to worry about the Corelli agent. Let me destroy the warehouse first. And while I'm doing that, I will loot the rookie Rex. They're near me. Double left click. I can loot any wreck that's within 2,500 meters. If it's further away than that, I gotta get closer. Apparently that Corelli agent is content to try to orbit me at about, oh, nine kilometers. He's a little bit beyond optimal and fall off, so I'm not trying to shoot him right now. He's about two kilometers further out than that. Let 
me get a little closer to this narcotics warehouse, approach, and then control spacebar. Alright, double lift click the cargo container. This is contraband. Crash. See the icon, skull and crossbones, right click, show info. It has a legality tab. This stuff is illegal in the Galente Federation, so you don't want to pick this up. Alright, I'm done here. I'm not going to bother with this last enemy. I'm not going to bother with that last wreck with loot on it. I'm going to pulse my afterburner, then turn off the afterburner. Turn on the armor repair, click the station, and let's dock. We're done here. I could have just gone straight for the warehouse if I wanted to, really. That would still complete the mission. I didn't need to kill anything else here. And turn off the armor repair. And reload the weapons. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Left click the first object, shift left click the last object, and I'm going to drag everything down into my items hanger. I don't need all that. Right click Civil Aeron, start conversation, complete the mission. Request the next mission. And he wants us to find Wolf and destroy him once and for all. And he will give us a Tristan to help us with the problem. Let's click accept and let's close. And we're going to actually make use of this ship. So let me open up the fitting window and strip everything off of my Atron. Right click the Tristan, assemble the ship. Let's look at his bonuses for a moment. 5% uh, bonus to small hybrid turret damage, and 7.5% bonus to small hybrid turret tracking speed per skill level. This contrasts with the Atron, which is 5% damage and 10% to fall off range. So, hybrid guns on a Tristan will track targets better than those same guns would on another ship. Right click the ship, change name, Tristan, okay. Now there is a minor issue. Hmm. You know what? I may not have gotten around to training the missile launchers yet. No, I did not. Silly me, I can't fit missile launchers to this thing yet. But, at the very least, my weapons will still work, and I believe the Tristan has more fitting space than the Atron. So, what we can do here... Let's find the weapons we were using just a moment ago. I will fit the railguns. Group the railguns together. Let's fit on the... Where did my small armor repair go? Ah, here we go. Small armor repair and afterburner. Now, this depletes in 47 seconds, so I can throw on modules to help with this. So what we shall do is go to the market. I think now would be a good time for that shopping trip, but I will skip that part in the video. I will go out and come back and just clip out that part of the video. Uh, two cap rechargers, I will purchase them in Vey. And capacitor, power, relay. Capacitor, power, relay, one. 
I've got two of those. I got some on sale right here in station, so I will buy two of those right here in station. Not very expensive, so let me fit those onto my ship. Okay. By the way, let me double check where this mission is located. I might be headed out of the system anyway. Uh, Clackiel. Alright. Now, let me open assets from the Neocom because I want to pick up the cap rechargers first. I will right click the station. What I'm doing here is I'm going to my assets in the Neocom, or I can go to Eve menu, assets, and this window tracks where you have kept your stuff. So if you forget which station you kept your stuff in, it's all recorded here. So you can record, you can right click V, set destination. I will then right click click heel, add waypoint, and I will then left click the menu icon in the upper left corner, stations, Clullanon, add waypoint. All right. And let me make sure I actually have ammunition on board my ship before I head out. So I'm going to throw on shift, left click and drag, some charges in. Let's bring about 2,000 of those and let's load up the weapons. All right. Close the fitting window, close the training queue, close this thing, I will undock. The last time I filled the last time I filmed this series Ah targeting level two. Excellent. The last time I filmed this series, I went through this stuff a lot slower. So my trial account alt had more time to train up various things. And so I was able to fit missile launchers and standard missiles to my Tristan the last time I was able to do this. As it stands, I'm not going to have the missiles ready for another, oh, two and a half hours. I'm not going to wait that long. The railguns will be fine. This is a tutorial mission. I've skipped ahead to the part of the video where I just docked up, where I'm now docking up in the station where I purchased the cap rechargers. Open up the fitting window, and I'm gonna drag on the cap rechargers. One, and two. So, with the cap rechargers, without the modules that I fit that are related to capacitor, my capacitor would deplete in 47 seconds if I tried to run everything. Uh, with all these modules running, it'll deplete in two minutes, five seconds. That gives me more time. Or, if I'm just trying to manage my capacitor properly, I can run things a little bit longer before I have to turn them off again. Now I'm going to head out to the mission, which is two jumps away. Again, remember that your next start uh, jump in the route will be listed up here, just in case you get confused. All right. I've skipped ahead again to where I've arrived in Clakeel. I'm going to warp to the encounter. And while we are in warp, I'm going to show info on my weapons. As fit to my Tristan, I've got a tracking speed of 0 0.173 radians per second. I got to keep that number in mind when going up against other frigates. Uh, the fall off is 3 kilometers, optimal is also 3 kilometers. So I have to shoot things that are 6 kilometers or closer preferably. But I can track things a little bit better than I could on the Atron. Today I don't have the missiles, but I should be fine. Let's activate the gate. Active. 
By the way, I forgot to insure this ship, but I rarely lose ships in missions anymore, so it's not something I ever think about. Uh, should be okay. Now, the Tristan can lock up to five targets, but I've only got targeting two, which means I can only lock four. I am going to approach those guys. Can I activate this gate? No, I can't. It's guarded. All right. Control space bar. They're close enough. I'm going to start shooting. And as targets get destroyed, I am locking up new targets to take their place on my list of target locks. Left click, F1. This Serpentis rookie is not doing a very good job of keeping up his angular velocity. I can track him at 1.132. Let's see what loot I can grab off of these guys. It's probably not particularly valuable, but I guess suppose every little bit helps. I'm gonna approach that wreck and start double left clicking things as I get within 2,500 meters. If nothing else, I could probably sell these things or just reprocess them into minerals, sell the minerals. Let me start shooting that guy. All right. Corelli agents, they like to orbit at nine kilometers. I'm gonna have to get closer. Pulse the afterburner, turn it on, turn it off, and I've clicked approach, and the Corelli agent is gonna try and get away from me. This guy's a little easier to reverse kite because he's got he likes to keep a wide radius. All right, left click him, hit approach. And again, I will turn on the afterburner. And I will turn off the afterburner. And hit F1 to start shooting. As you can see, the railguns are doing a fine job just on their own with these tutorial missions. Now that everything's dead, I'm going to click Activate Gate. Well, left click the gate, then click activate gate. I'm going to pulse the afterburner. Control R to reload. And let me open my cargo hold just to make sure. Alright, I've got 1900 antimatter charges. I'm fine. Basically, I can reload my weapons five times over. Almost. Well, reload them from empty five times over. All right, let me zoom out my camera, figure out which direction these enemies are in. Ah, there they are. All right, zoom in the camera again so I can see my ship. Double left click towards them, turn on the afterburner. Turn off the afterburner. Control spacebar for full stop, and start shooting. And right, my range is about six kilometers. To be able to hit targets reasonably well, I generally want to keep them at less than optimal plus fall off away, and under my 
tracking speed. So 6 kilometers or less and an angular velocity of less than 0.17 radians per second. Now these Corelli scouts are really close. Oh, they're way too close. Oh, hold on. Some of them may have bumped things. Or maybe they turned off an afterburner? Can't tell. Their angular velocities are fluctuating a bit, but they're less than 0.17, which means my guns should still be able to hit them. They're less than optimal distance away, so I'm not missing because of distance. Again, his angular velocity is 0.133 radians per second. 0.1337, strangely enough. No, that is not elite angular velocity, I'm afraid. Not a lot elite enough to save you, buddy. Alright. Let's left click off in this direction because I want to go around this obstacle. Ah, Corelli agents. I've seen these guys before. And they seem to be headed off towards my left. Now they like to orbit close, so I'm going to reverse kite them. I'm going to approach the first one, force them to try and move away from me. Turn off the afterburner, start firing. And he's turned away from me to try and open the range, but he's also dropping his angular velocity as a result. Again, players are not going to be that stupid. If you try to reverse kite a player and he or she is paying attention, they are going to try and fly manually to keep up their angular velocity. Uh, two more enemies in this pocket. Double left click in that direction, turn on the afterburner. I'm gonna hit Control R to reload. Partial reloads are fine, by the way. If you only used about 50 rounds out of your 200, reloading's only gonna take 50 rounds out of your cargo hold. The game is smart about that. Control spacebar, turn off the afterburner. Control spacebar to full stop, and then Alt F1 or Option F1 to turn off the afterburner. And I want to approach that agent. Turn on the afterburner, turn off the afterburner. I'm barely doing any damage to that Corelli. It is possible to hold down the left mouse button on something. And you'll get some context options for show info, or target lock, or approach, or orbit, or keep at range, or look at. I don't like to use those options. I find them annoying. I have other ways of doing that sort of thing. Uh, so, I like to get rid of that. I'll show you in a moment how to do that. Alright, control space bar. Let's select the gate. I'm going to double left click off in that direction to get closer to the gate. There's obstacles in my way. And I will pulse my armor repair. I'm going to hit the escape menu, uh, go to the general settings tab, expand action menu with middle mouse button, and close. Make that go away. So now if I'm left clicking and dragging, I don't get that context menu, and I can rotate my camera uh, without interruptions. If I really need that context menu, I can hold down the middle mouse button and pull up the necessary option. But I don't like to use that method anyway. Activate gate. And let's reload the weapons. 
So as you can see, the railguns alone are doing the job just fine. This would go faster with missiles. If you were in my position, you might be tempted to say just log out of the game, come back tomorrow or something when you have the missile skills trained up, and go buy a standard launcher and light missiles. Doesn't matter too much. Alright, Wolf's Stasis Tower. This is a stasis web of fire. I'm gonna destroy this this thing first. So I've been slowed down to 100 meters per second by the stasis web of fire. Alright, time to turn on the armor repair. We're going to put my capacitor to the test here. Um, if everything is running, I would be draining 1.3 gigajoules per second. I am not running the afterburner. And the afterburner would be responsible for about, oh, 2 gigajoules per second, which means as long as I'm not running the afterburner, I'm cap stable. A very important fact to know for my given setup. By the way, skills are also important. Two of the skills that I had you inject and train up in the engineering category. One of them is energy management, the other is energy systems operation. Now I have energy management level 1, I'm training level 2 right now. And basically that's those are the two skills that increase my internal capacitor regeneration rate. The higher I have those skill levels, the more capacitor I will generate per second. So those are very good skills to have if you're using modules that generate a lot of capacitor. Notice that I'm running my armor repair all the time. I'm tanking everything in here without a problem. Now I'm going to shoot the stolen Navy ship. Oh, look, there's a cargo container. Let me loot that. No, eh, it's nothing important. And there's Wolf, in a pirate capsule. Now Wolf, I don't think is a capsuleer according to the lore, but in any event, our objective is to kill that thing. So we're gonna destroy it. Alright, the mission is done. And just for kicks, I will approach the Corelli agent, hit the afterburner, and start shooting. Actually, you know what? I think I'm done with this mission. I don't need to waste your time. Yeah, everything's green check marks. Let's warp to Stargate Aletta. Oh, this guy's almost dead. All right. Now let's warp to Stargate Aletta. We're done here. Warp drive Docking request accepted. I have skipped ahead to where I've just returned to Clonalon and docked up. Gonna right click Seville Aeron. Start conversation. Complete the mission. And we are done. That finishes the military chain. In the next episode... Oh, almost forgot. Don't forget to go through your skill books again and see what you can and cannot inject. Uh, any skill books that you have injected are skill books you're not carrying in your cargo hold. Skill books that you can't lose because your ship was blown up. So if it's already injected, you're not going to forget it. As long as you keep your medical clones up to date. In the next episode, we will go through the exploration chain and how to use uh, the onboard scanner and probes. In the meantime, thank you for watching.